What's happening, East Siders? I hope you're having a great day coming at you with another movie review. It is The Marvels, the follow-up to 2019's Captain Marvel, as well as a follow-up to the Disney Plus show Miss Marvel. And to be quite honest with you, this movie, it, it, it's fine. Like, I enjoyed it more than um, Ant-Man, Quantumania. I enjoyed it more than Thor Love and Thunder. I didn't find it to be a drag like The Eternals. I thought it was fine. It was, it was perfectly serviceable. Like, if you take anything from this review, take that this movie is, is serviceable. Like, it's a satisfactory grade in school. It is... Like, if you've gone to a restaurant and you, you know, you order your meal and the meal, it isn't, like, out of your mind good and it isn't dog shit. It's just a meal. It is something that it fills your belly up, provided you with a little bit of sustenance, a little bit of nourishment, perhaps, a little, some, some vitamins, some protein, a little bit of calcium. It did the job. It hit the spot. But it's nothing that you're going to remember for being too good or too bad. It's just one of the thousands of meals that you'll have in your lifetime and that is how I feel about this movie it is just it's just a movie like it is it is perfectly serviceable like there's nothing wrong with it it's just it's okay I will say this and I do want to compliment the movie on a couple of points I think the performance by Aman Balani as Kamala Khan I thought she did really well of the three primary Marvel leads uh, Captain Marvel Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan uh, Miss Marvel I think she did the best she brought a lot of energy she brought a lot of enthusiasm to the role um, I really enjoyed her family like I, I I enjoyed them on Miss Marvel and I'm honestly wanting to see more of her like if whether it's in the the Young Avengers movie that looks like they're uh, setting up with some of the other Disney Plus characters that we've seen. Um, if it's in her uh, second season of Miss Marvel or if it's in a sequel to this, she gets, you know, the movie all to herself. I'm looking forward to seeing what she does. And I think Amon Galani, I think she has an opportunity to really grow in this role. If Marvel doesn't go the whole reboot route, I think she could be a real standout character of the upcoming phases of what the MCU is going to be. Um, I think uh, Tiana Paris as Monica Rambo, she was fine. She, she was serviceable. Um, she didn't seem, you know, too enthusiastic in this one, like how she was in some of Scarlet, uh, the, not Scarlet, the show, um, uh, WandaVision. That, that's it. Uh, not as uh, enthusiastic as she was in some of WandaVision. Not nearly as fun as she was in the, um, in, uh, the, uh, they clone Tyrone on Netflix or not as good as she was in the Candyman remake from a couple of years ago, but she, she was fine. She, she was fine in this one. Um, I do think she picks up the energy a little bit when she's with Kamala or her family or her interactions with Nick Fury. I think those are really well done. Um, Brie Larson as Carol Danvers. Um, it is what it is. Um, I, I'm still having trouble connecting with her and we're now seeing her in Captain Marvel, we saw her in Endgame, and now this movie, and it just ain't hitting, I'm, I'm sorry, like, I know there's people that really love Brie Larson as an actress, but so far from the MCU, she's not really giving me much to connect with uh, from a character perspective, not like I was almost instantly connected with Tony Stark, with Captain America, with Thor, with Black Widow, hell, even characters that are more recently introduced, like Shane Chi, like Kamala Khan, I have a better connection with, and I, I don't know if it's the writing that they've been doing with her, I don't know if it's her performance, it's just, she, it ain't hitting, like, something, something ain't working, the math ain't mathing with her performance, and uh, it, it can make some of the scenes in the movie a little bit of a drag. I do think she's better in this than she was in the first Captain Marvel movie, mainly because I think playing off of Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan, that worked better for her. But overall, it's still eh, it's still kind of a mid-performance for, for her, in, in my opinion. Um, the action scenes in this movie, for the most part, are actually pretty creatively done when it comes to usage of all three Marvel's powers, as well as the gimmick of them switching places uh, randomly when they use their powers. I think that was done really well, and it was pretty inventive. It's some stuff that I haven't seen really in uh, the Marvel Universe. I haven't really seen that in a superhero movie, and so I, I, I give praise to 
uh, Nia DaCosta, I give praise to um, whoever set up those action scenes. I think those were really well done and creative. We got a few janky um, VFX moments, but as long as Marvel is going to be rushing these projects out, as long as Marvel is not going to give the VFX artists money, uh, the, the money or the time to actually do this stuff right, you're going to get some jank CGI in Marvel projects. So I guess that's just that's just the world that we live in now. But yeah, it, that, that pretty much does it for my thoughts on this movie. Like, like I said, it's just... It's middle of the road, it's fine, it's serviceable, it's not the worst of the MCU, it's not near the best of the MCU, it's just another C-grade movie. And so, on our scale of winner, edger, slumper, sleeper, and of course dumpster, this movie gets a firm slumper. Something that I'm probably not going to rush to see again, and honestly, if I were to give a suggestion... I would say you can wait until this is on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, that, that, that's about it for my thoughts on this movie. Um, shout out to Mia DaCosta. I don't think this movie did a good job in showcasing her talents as a director. Definitely check out the Candyman that she did a couple of years ago. I think that does a bit of a better job in showing what she can do as a director. And I'm hoping that she gets to work on some fun projects that actually allow her to kind of kind of flex a little bit and show what she really can do because I think she has a great future as a director. It's just this being a part of that Marvel machine, it can be a little draining to some people. Like James Gunn can kind of work within it. Um, Ryan Coogler has shown that he can kind of work within it, but it doesn't really work for every director. And I think Mia DeCosta was kind of kind of hurt a little bit being in the Marvel machine. So I'm hoping. The next project that she has that's outside of Marvel, I'm really looking forward to seeing what that is. But that's going to do it for this review. Let me know what you think of Captain Marvel. If you enjoyed this movie, hey, let me know. Sound off in the comments. I feel great for you. I'm not even saying that to be an asshole. I really do think if people are enjoying this movie, are getting a kick out of it, are connected with it, that is great. Um, definitely don't want to rain on anybody's parade. If you're enjoying the Marvel Cinematic Universe, hey. Keep, keep doing your thing, keep enjoying it. But if you're like me and you're kind of on the fence with a lot of this stuff, this isn't going to be the movie to reinvigorate you. But that's going to do it for the review. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, drink water, call your people, tell them you love them, and catch you guys next time for more reviews.